It's good to see you today. I hope you're having a good day. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to be looking in verses 23 down through chapter 11, verse 1. Verse 1 of chapter 11 really should go with chapter 10. But anyway, let's get over there. Let's read it together. Verse 23, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. If any of those who do not believe invites you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you this was offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other, for why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, then why am I evil spoken of for the food over which I give thanks? Therefore, whether you, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Alright, to, to think about this passage... And to tie it in with what we spoke about yesterday, when he talks about fleeing from idolatry, and we talked about fellowship and the idea of giving God what is God's, ascribing to God what we should ascribe to God, and glorifying God and worship and such things as, as that. But now it's, it's a continuation of the thought, but to just go ahead and get into it, he says, all things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. That does not mean that, and the, the point is, stuff is not sinful. Things are not sinful. Food is not sinful. Stone is not sinful. Okay, all things are, are lawful. It, that does not mean that there is no such thing, that Paul could do whatever he wanted to do. That is not the point. Paul is not saying there's no such thing as sin. There's obviously things that are sinful. Obviously. He's not saying, just for example, sexual immorality is lawful. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying drunkenness is lawful. That's not what he's saying. Okay, he's saying stuff. All things are lawful for me, even in, even in this realm. In this realm. There is, and I, I've heard another fellow put it this way, all lawful things are lawful. And perhaps th that is true, whether that's what Paul means or not is another question. But in the realm of what we're talking about, in the realm of liberties, these things are lawful. Not everything's a liberty. There are still commands, but... That's, that seems to be what Paul is talking about. Stuff, things, and, and things pertaining to liberties, all things are lawful. But not everything is helpful. So the question is, okay, well, what's helpful? The things that we do, and this is, I think this is one of the issues. What we do is not done in a vacuum, or at least it should not be done in a vacuum. We have a very indep independent streak in us. And we're like Israel and old, and every man does what's right in their own eyes, and they don't think about others. Well, he says everything's, hel everything's lawful, but not everything's helpful. The things that we are doing are not being done in a vacuum. So we need to be thinking about helping others. And we'll say this before I forget. Pardon me. We're not even just talking about our brethren. He's going to use the example that we read. If an unbeliever invites you, we're not just talking about brethren, we're talking about everybody, whether it's Jew or Gentile or church, whether it's unbeliever or believer, we're trying to do what we can to be helpful towards all. That's what we're trying to do. So, okay, within this, within this idea of liberties, okay, all is lawful, but not everything's helpful. But then Paul goes on and he says, all things are lawful for me. And he's not just repeating himself, I don't think. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me. 
Paul understood. How are all how did Paul know that these things were lawful? It's because he understood. He says in another place, though, he says, not everybody understands that. So therefore, they are bound by their own conscience. Paul, in talking about this, he says, you need to be thinking about other people's conscience. But in these matters, he understood he was free. Not everybody gets that, though. So he says, all things are lawful for me. Does that mean all things are lawful for you? That depends on your conscience. Within this, within this scope, it's lawful for me because, for example, Romans says, if you have faith, if something's not done in faith, then it is sin. If something is doubtful, it is sin. But if you have faith, keep it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself. Well, Paul says, I'm, by doing these things, I'm not condemning myself. He says, I'm free. All things are lawful for me. But we seek the edification and the well-being of others. Now that business, the edification, right? And the well-being of others. Sometimes folks don't appreciate that and recognize it for what it is. For example, in first in earlier in the chapter, earlier in chapter 10, and it's going to talk about how as as all of them came out of Egypt and all ate the same spiritual food, all drank the same spiritual drink, right? You have all that verse, but with most of them, God was not well pleased. And you have different scenarios, different situations where a lot of people died. Each one of those instances, whether it's talking about Mount Sinai when the idol was crushed to powder and they were made to drink it, whether it's talking about when they complained about the manna and you have the, the brazen serpent being made and all, all those instances. Was God trying to discipline his people? The answer is yes. So was God disciplining them for their own well-being? Yes. Paul, he's going to say in other places, he's going to say, how should I come? And if they didn't, if they didn't respond... If they didn't clean their act up, he's going to have to come in and he's going to have to clean house. He says, shall I come with a rod? Even there, it's being done for their edification and well-being. Sometimes we think edification is just... We, we think edification is just when we are soft and gentle. But if, if someone is is hard and they rebuke sin and they say, man, you shouldn't be doing this. That man in 1 Corinthians 5, who they, who Paul says, he was already judged. He had already judged the man as though he were there. And he says, you deliver him to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his soul may be saved. You withdraw from that man. Keep no company with him. Was all of that being done? And I'll say this. We know from 2 Corinthians, he says, I wrote these things not for him, not for the one who suffered the wrong, but for the church. I understand that. So that means even there, as he made them sorrow, as he made them sorrow in a godly manner, according to 2 Corinthians, even as he wrote and he made them sorrowful, was it being done for their edification and for their well-being? You better believe it. This is, like, this is like what Hebrews says about fathers. We all had fathers who disciplined us as seemed best to them, and we paid them respect. But he, talking about God, is doing this for our profit, for our edification, for our well-being. That's why the Lord is doing these things. Paul says, all things are lawful, but all things aren't helpful. I'm going to do whatever it takes for them, whatever is best for them, whatever it is. If that means I'm going to have to deny myself and never eat meat again, so be it. I will not exercise the authority that I have, the liberty that I have. I will deny myself for others. But in all, in this instance and in all instances, I am trying to do what is best for others. That's what he says. There at the tail end, verse 33, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. 
that's what we're talking about. All things are lawful. All things are lawful for me. But if we think that that is a permission slip to ignore and neglect others and to just do whatever pleases us, we don't understand one thing about what it means to be a Christian. That's the truth of the matter. I hope this study has been helpful for you today. Appreciate, appreciate you joining us. Hope you have a good day. And I hope you join us tomorrow as we wrap up 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Thanks for being with us today.